to confirm that I'm in life church. I felt like I was in a different church. May God bless you. And um, I want to give a testimony that the letter we were waiting for is finally out. He's dependable. He's reliable. Hallelujah. And I bless the Lord that we moved by faith and we decided in January we will be here and I bless the Lord for your faith because you said we are not going back to the old church and we stepped out by faith not because we had any money but because we had God and see what the Lord has done. It's a new dawn for life church. Hallelujah. And new things and many things are going to happen. We will just ask for your patience and also your, your commitment as you have always done. Let me go to the word of the day. Um, I want to talk about patterns of true blessings. Patterns of true blessings. Patterns of true blessings. I will teach today. I hope you came with your notebook and your Bible. Because I want to teach the difference between blessing, riches, and wealth. Blessing, riches, and wealth. That's what I want to teach. The difference between blessing, riches, and wealth. It's, um, it's quite a detailed topic, but I pray that God will give you understanding. Let's begin with basic definitions of terms. There are three words that I want to bring to your attention. There is a blessing, there is the blessing, and there is to be blessed. Those are different things. So a blessing is a public declaration. A blessing is a public declaration of a favored status with God. A blessing is a public declaration of a favored status with God. That's a blessing. It's an announcement. It's a declaration um, of a favored status with God. The blessing, the blessing is now what gives power for prosperity and success. A blessing is a declaration, but the blessing the blessing is endowed power. When I declare a blessing, that blessing now carries power for prosperity and success. So the blessing is endowed power for prosperity and success. I can say that the blessing is like a spiritual energy that triggers physical results. The blessing is like a spiritual energy that triggers physical results. So, we can make a declaration of blessings and then that blessing lands on you and it now gives you power to prosper. Are we together? And then now to be blessed is to be blessed is to be granted special favor by God. To be blessed is to be granted special favor by God with resulting joy and prosperity. To be blessed is to be granted special favor by God with resulting joy and prosperity. To be blessed is to be granted special favor by God with resulting joy and prosperity. So there is a blessing. A blessing is released from an authority. When that blessing lands upon you, it becomes the blessing. And that's like an energy, a force, a power that provokes you to begin to walk in results. When you walk in those results, we say you are blessed. Are we together? I want to go slowly because when you understand these matters, many things will begin to change in your life. So, 
let's assume Pastor Eugene is here. I can stand as an authority and say you are blessed. What have I released? An utterance. But as it lands on him, it's not just an utterance. It's an energy. It is a force and a power. And when it lands on him, he may not manifest it immediately. But he's blessed. With the time, we will now begin to see him walking in the blessing. The results and the prosperity of what was announced. Now let's go because there are three institutions granted with the mandate of pronouncing blessings. There are three institutions and out of these we'll be able to explain. There are three institutions granted with the mandate of pronouncing blessings. Three institutions that are given that mandate or that ability or capacity to pronounce blessings. There are three of them. Number one, family through the father. The family institution through the father is an office that is mandated to pronounce blessings. Genesis 27 from verse 27 to 29. Genesis 27 from verse 27 to 29. There are three institutions mandated to pronounce blessings. The first one is the family unit and the person in charge is a father. The Bible says, and he came near and kissed him and he smelled the smell of his clothing and blessed him and said, surely the smell of my son is like the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. Look at 28. Therefore, May God give you of the dew of heaven, of the fatness of the earth, and plenty of grain and wine. 29. Let people serve you and nations bow to you. Be master of your brethren and let your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be everyone who curses you and blessed be those who bless you. This is Isaac blessing Jacob. And all he did was to release pronouncements. He never gave him any cow. He never gave him any material possession. But he gave him utterances. Because according to the office that Isaac was holding as a father in a family unit, he had the mandate and the power to declare blessings. And what he announced were words. But those words began to coordinate spiritual motions of spirits towards the direction of that son. You read the story of Jacob. He ran from his father's house. He never left with anything material. But when he came back, he was blessed. Are we together? The only thing he left with were pronouncements, utterances, decrees. But those pronouncements, according to the legality of blessing, were enough to usher him to prosperity. So a father carries an authority to bless. And you know the blessings of a father can never be given by a priest. So the father sat and said whatever he said. I have no time but when you come... Esau came and the father said, I have no more blessings left for you. And it was a sad day for Esau because every pronouncement was made over Jacob. And Jacob ran from his father's house with a staff, Kijiti. But the day they were meeting with Esau, he had a staff. To appoint Jacob, lands in the house of Laban and Laban realizes I am prospering because there is a man that carries grace and an energy of blessing. The Bible says and Laban interrogated Jacob by the system of divination and he decided I'm not just with another man. I have a man that is blessed though he has not manifested the energies of prosperity are upon him. 
That's why I cannot treat you casually. Because I don't know utterances that are upon your life. Hallelujah. And so, look at Genesis 49, 25 to 26. This is the blessings that Jacob pronounced upon Joseph. Genesis 49. By the God of your father who will help you. And by the almighty who will bless you. With blessings of heaven above. Blessings of the deep that lies beneath. Blessings of the breast and blessings of the womb. Look at 26. The blessings of your father have excelled the blessings of my ancestors. Up to the utmost bound of the everlasting hill, they shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him who was separated from his brother. This is what the father declared. Look at 49.25. May the Lord open your ears for understanding. Let's read. There are four blessings that Jacob released upon Joseph. Four. Number one, it was... And by the Almighty who will bless you with blessings of heaven above. When a man operates with the blessings of the heavens, the first dimension is operating under open heaven. That is the first level. Any battle that a believer goes through, witchcraft, attacks of the satanic, Freemason, occultism, it is not a target on the man first, it is a target on his heavens. When your heavens are attacked, there will be a lot of contention on the earth. Because formations happen in the heavens before they manifest on the earth. And so, the attack of the heavens is what spiritual men master so that they can engage contentions. In the book of Daniel, there was an attack over the heavens of Daniel. For 21 days, there were no answers. No answers over Daniel. Because the principalities of Persia had already conquered the heavens of Daniel. And the man could not do business with God because there was a hijacked heaven. So anytime there are demonic activities, the first thing they target is your heavens. I love one day Pastor Patrick taught us about the three things that the heavens deliver. Is it Hosea 2.21? Yeah, Hosea 2.21. The three things that the heavens deliver. That's why when the heavens are hijacked, there is a problem. So the man was declaring that, Oh, Jacob, you shall operate under open heavens. Look at that. Look at Hosea 2.21. Hosea 2.21. It shall come to pass in that day, that I will answer, says the Lord. Everybody read. I will answer the heavens. And they shall answer the Meaning that if your heavens are hijacked, your earth is affected. The answers of our prayers, they first appear in the heavens. That is why Daniel, so God can answer from heaven, but he does not answer to earth. He answers to the heavens. He that controls the heavens manages the answers. Let me do a demonstration so that you understand. Just come Pato and, and, and Eugene. Now let's assume and maybe Pastor William just come. Let's assume Pato is God. So Pato is God. Pastor William is praying. Please pray. 40 days of consecration. No, that's not how you pray. Please be serious. You kneel and pray. Seek heaven. You can sit. I know the suit is new. But pray. And so now, come Eugene. So the first level is that when we make our prayers, the first level is that the prayers are answered in the heavens. Are we together? So in the heavens, you either have angels. Oh yeah. Come Eric. Or demons. Are we together? So in the heavens, 
the heavens there is contention there is contention so this man has prayed on the one of 40 days the answer from god god has heard but god uses the heaven so god has already answered the heaven so if if you have not conquered the powers of darkness sorry to use you as a bad example if you have not conquered the powers of darkness it means there can be hindrance over your heavens so at this hour what happens is in the realm of men we call it delay in the realm of the spirit we call it hijacking that the angel that carries my answers has not yet been released because i because the heavens are filled with answers but there is a contention that must happen on the earth this is why when men enter intercessions they begin to provoke for divine interventions is someone getting me that so that tells me if this man gets tired and he was meant to go for 40 and gets tired on day 20 now get tired and go so the man will never see his answer because the heavens are hijacked what happens in such a heaven is that a witch who does not get tired a witch who does not get tired can now enter now who will be a witch here yeah oh roy come you have been volunteered so this man is forever faithful on his altar the man services the altar january to december so the man does not get tired so what happens through demonic engagements because the one that labors on earth and the one that is faithful on his altar is the one that controls his heaven so if you are not committed on your altar of prayer remember there are transactions and exchanges happening in the realms of heaven so at this hour it is possible for this delivery man an angel to be hijacked by this demonic angel and then now roy accesses the prayers of the saints and a man comes by the system of witchcraft and he receives what the son of god was meant to receive that's why the bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above the devil has nothing to give them that go to the witches they are doing business with the answers that the saints prayed for is someone getting me that's why when men begin to enter into warfare there is always another exchange that now pastor william can get tired and he decides no 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 i this i got tired when it was too early and then he goes for the second half go back to prayer what he does not know he's now beginning to engage his heavens and the heaven the lord must begin to ask what happened because i answered where did the answer go so now there is divine searching moriah come there is divine searching and another powerful angel must be deployed in the heavens so that now whatever this angel could not do this powerful angel can do and at this hour the angel has the power to go and get stolen goods the angel has the power to deliver it the angel has the power to counter any demonic activity and then the answers come this is why men ought to pray always and never faint is someone getting my point this is why you should never get out of your prayer altar when you know whatever you are praying for is the will of god is in line with the purposes of god you must stay there and say lord i am not getting out of this area until i get my answers many people get discouraged easily many have surrendered at the peak of their delivery listen to me we serve a god that not only hears prayer we serve a god that answers our prayer that is why jacob said to joseph let the heavens be blessed let your heavens be perpetually open that it doesn't matter whether a witch activates his altar by my blessing no witch can interfere with your heaven let thy heavens be perpetually opened oh jacob oh joseph that wherever you enter wherever you enter you are operating under an open heaven as a father in this house i declare in the name of jesus anyone operating under a shut heaven today in the name of jesus let every contention come to an end let every battle come to an end may there be divine backup may there be 
deployment of angels of war in your heavens right now whatever has been hijacked may there be a divine exchange may there be a divine transaction whatever is in wrong hands whatever left eternity with your name on it today in the name of jesus i declare a divine exchange a divine exchange them that have sat on your throne them that are sitting on your blessing we fire them now we fire them now we fire them now them that use the moon the sun and the stars for their witchcraft we cancel and nullify their powers i declare now the blessings of the heavens hallelujah look at that scripture hosea 2 21 whatever the father declared over J joseph was the secret of his prosperity when a man operates under open heaven warfare has come to an end that i will answer see what the lord answers three things 22 the earth shall answer with grain provision provision number two with new wine this level of new wine is revelations number three with oil impartations you know in this life you don't just need grain no there are dimensions that open up by revelation you can never go further than what you know light reveals light reveals that's why when god loves you he doesn't give you miracles he gives you light revelations when the heavens are opened you can open your bible and see what theologians have never seen when the heavens are open new level of impartations that you don't even know whether you are a prophet or not but every dream you dream comes to pass it is not about titles it's about open heaven what matters is that there are impartations upon my life sometimes we hinder moves of god by definitions oh you know you're a prophet you know you're an apostle listen allow the impartations of god to operate according to the seasons of your life one season you can be prophetic the next season you can be apostolic the next season you can be evangelistic the next season you can be pastoral why because the ordinations of god are there to empower you in every season hallelujah so when the heavens are shut basic necessities of food shelter begin to become a problem because there is contentions and hijackings in the realms of the spirit and so let's go now back to genesis just stand just stand let's go back to genesis because go back to genesis 49 25 because this i discovered when the saints walk in these blessings that's it and the almighty will bless you with blessing of heaven above have you understood the blessings of heaven above this is beyond rain this is beyond rain this is operating under a victorious heaven it is possible is someone getting me it is possible to have a 24 hour frequency in the spirit look at the second one the, you the, the, the blessings of the deep that lies beneath what is that blessing of the earth when i got this revelation when i got it i discovered very few believers are in the business of the blessings of the earth. The Bible says blessing of the deep that lies beneath. This is oil. This is diamonds. This is gold. This is silver. Minerals. Very few believers are in those enterprises. Hi. It takes revelation to understand. Anyone that does business with the blessings of blessings of the deep that lie beneath or the blessings of the earth, many of them are not talking the language of a hundred thousand. Those men transact in millions. I sat down with my pastors, I told them, in this year there are two meetings. There are people sitting to budget for money in their account. Corporate, some of you are budgeting. 
you, you are, your proposal went through you have been funded a hundred million so now you must come up with a budget of using the money i said as a church we are still behind we are planning for money that you are believing to receive i said that cycle must come to an end that a time will come we will see to plan for resources in the account we say for missions we allocate 20 million for sunday school we allocate 10 million because the money is already in the account not organizing a rambesia and every time there is our sub message hey guys to changamke i believe that cycle must come to an end when men begin to understand there is the blessing of the earth beneath if one man today was running a company of gold some announcements will never be made in this church do we have minerals i'm a geologist by training the oil you see in Tanzania, in Trukana, was discovered in exploration as early as 1985. That oil, it was not discovered in the Uhuru era. A politician went and bought rights of exploration. Before the Chinese entered, he was paid two billion. Because there are men whose ears are where conversations are happening. And if nothing happens, the church, we have been praying with our eyes closed. By the time we open our eye, the cake of the nation has been divided. And even right now, I see there is an agenda to push us into that Asian prayer pattern. This time, we need to pray with our eyes open. As they divide the cake, we say, this is our portion. We cannot be praying for a land we are not benefiting from. May the Lord begin to open your eyes in the spirit. May you be where conversations are happening. May you pick the whispers and know where conversations are happening. All of us will not fit on this pulpit. Some of you, your blessing is in the marketplace. You must rule by the coin. Yeah. You must rule by the coin. As men are complaining of dollars, some of us, that should be your normal operation currency. You deal with pounds and dollars shillings you have left to men that are dealing with farming you you are dealing with hey. go and look at the price of gold on the internet it is not valued in shillings it's dollar and pounds the blessings of the deep that lies beneath diamond oil <laughs> i'm here to provoke you some of you, you have been hearing conversation of gold. gold. What are men saying? Are we together? Then there, there is, when I discover this, the blessings of the, of the deep that lies beneath. One prophet told me, money is above anointing. I asked him, what do you mean? He said, how many anointed men do you know that have no money? He said, money operates on a realm higher than anointing. <laughs> and he said, pastor, when you get money, you will hear God and see God well. I asked him, what do you mean? He said, imagine now, you are not concerned about rent. You are not concerned about school fees. Those things that worry men don't worry you. I tell you, you'll have enough time in the presence of God without any worry and you'll hear God direct. And the man of God, what the Lord gave him is an eye to see minerals without geological intelligence. He has a prophetic eye. So anytime he's about to buy land, he must see in the spirit and know there are minerals here. So what he has bought is property in Zimbabwe and what he does is minings. That man does not rely on church to plant church. He plants church himself. I say there are realms we must, must enter. There are realms we must enter. The world beneath. I feel like just declaring because I don't know who's here. 
may we begin to have men in the oil industry may we begin to have dealers of gold and minerals globally may the lord open your eyes and connect your connections and connect your networks whatever lies in the earth according to psalms 24 the earth is of the lord and all that is in it they are in may the lord now begin to connect men that will hear men doing business with dubai doing business with france doing business with india not just these local transactions we refuse to be at the table level go to nakula vitu zimeanguka it's time to sit on the table you speak in tongues but above all there is an anointing over your life he said blessing of the breast and of the womb they go together the blessing of the breast the science of birthing is a mystery any mother that has given birth they will tell you as the child is approaching the breast begin to swell and when the child is born the milk begins to come out there is no woman who can produce milk three months of pregnancy there is a connection in the mind and the nerves that begins now to tell the breast something has been bad deliver milk it's a mystery and that milk is in the right temperature the right temperature the right temperature that milk has all the nutrients needed for a child to grow immunity is in that milk and that milk is what sustains what you have delivered so there must be a connection between your womb and your breast it is one thing to deliver a vision is another thing to provide and supply for it so sometimes the devil may not fight your delivery the devil will fight the supply of the delivery this is now when men begin to close business you had a genuine business born in the womb of the spirit but your breast were dry there is a prayer i don't think i think is it in Hosea, where a man prays and says what shall you do to them oh god let their wombs miscarriage and let their breast not produce milk is it Hosea 9 as for Ephraim, their glory shall fly away like a bird. No bird, no pregnancy, and no conception. This is a curse. Give them, O oh Lord. What will you give them? Give them a miscarrying womb. And what? Dry breast. That paradventure they deliver. Let that thing die. This is, this is the prophet declaring a curse over Ephraim after they turned against Israel. Is someone getting me? And I want to tell you the truth. There are people who make these prayers for us. That oh, let them abort whatever they carry. Let their breast be trying breast. Ah, Jesus. Whatever we shall deliver, there shall be supply. Whatever we shall deliver, there shall be supply. And I'm talking about supernatural supply. The same way when a child is born, milk is automatic. I declare there will be divine supply over everything that has been delivered in the name of Jesus. None of you shall close shop. None of you shall close business. Whatever is born in the womb of prayer, it, it shall overcome. None of you shall close whatever they have begun. May the Lord now begin to provoke your breast to supply for whatever the womb has delivered. Amen. 2024 you will not operate with a miscarrying womb neither will you operate with a dry breast. We declare conception. We declare the full full courage of the pregnancy and we declare delivery and sustenance. These are mysteries. Hallelujah. I am not saying the path will be okay but I'm saying there is a system of supernatural supply what I have discovered our walk with God is not a monthly walk it's a daily walk give us this day our daily bread sometimes you open your shop and that is faith 
any businessman knows you you never open your shop because someone told you i'm coming you open you know in your spirit someone will come hallelujah one of the things that will begin to happen in this season there will be conversations i've learned this art someone said never share your dreams it's halfway true if you meet men that are dreaming like you you can share your dreams the problem is when you share your dreams with people that have never dreamt because every supply you need is connected to a man hallelujah that's why sometimes it's good to be sensitive and have conversations there's something i've been trying to set up and i tell you the truth i have met men divinely by just sharing i want to do this and they say i'm in that business i'm in that market i go to aurora shore i meet my cousin and we just begin to talk and she tells me imagine this is what i do nowadays and we don't know where and i'm like that's what i want to do and i'm like these are not coincidences these are divine orchestrations may the lord begin to lead your feet to men that matter to destiny helpers to people that carry the wisdom of what you need to understand now that you have launched out may the lord begin to ordain your steps the blessings of the heavens the blessings of the earth beneath and the blessings of the womb and the breast may that be your portion hallelujah no matter the storms please don't look at the economy in shillings look at it in dollars begin to change your mind from some levels of operation you can have your seats somebody say the blessings of a father have you understood anything yes number two you can the second institution that is permitted to bless is the priests. The priests. Leviticus 9.22. The priests. The priests. Leviticus 9.22. There is what we call the priestly blessings. So when I stand on the altar, I have that mandate. Then Aaron lifted his hand toward the people, blessed them, and came down from from offering the sin offering, the burnt offering, and peace offering. So Aaron blessed them. Deuteronomy 10 and verse 8. Deuteronomy 10 and verse 8. I'm believing God that will do business. I'm, I'm looking for gold. Yeah. These things we are not just reading. My work is not to teach you. As I get revelation, I also step out. Now as a father, not as a pastor. To use a gold. To skia vilona skianga. Na diamonds. Hallelujah. From heaven. You came from heaven. No. All of us are born of a woman. Sit on those tables. Someone told me some people have joined golf. Not because they love chasing a small ball. They know that's where men talk. Yeah. There are, there are places you enter. <laughs> One man told me they had invited me for to go and see him here at the Limuru golf course he told me pastor you see that table that table has a third of Kenya economy there were four men planning to buy land here a tea farm that was being sold at 350 million and they transacted in less than five minutes one said I'll give a hundred that's a hundred million and after five minutes they had bought a land 350 so my friend was playing golf with them and they asked him how how much they said we are betting ule atashinda aende na pesa akaulizwa in kikuyu uko na 1 million akauliza ya nini akasema ya kucheza you know mwenye anashinda anaenda na hiyo pesa akauliza kucheza hivyo tu akasema ya because this game is less than 1 hour and then one of the rich men asked him, how much do you have? He said 2,000. He said, wekelea miambili. He, he was hoping to win. He didn't win. And the man told him, one day you'll understand why I told you, wekelea miambili. And he wanted to pull him to the level of their game to understand that men do these things. There are meetings you sit, no, na, unua mikono nasema poverty. You must live my life. Please begin to change your audience. Begin to change your audience. Mtu ananunua garimpia na economy. Mtu anajenga flats na economy. Unamuliza boss, 
aje. We learn from men. Somebody say priestly blessing, Deuteronomy 10.8. Uh, at that time, the Lord separated the tribe of Levi to bear the ark of covenant of the Lord, to stand before the Lord, to minister to him, and to bless his name to this day. Look at the same 21.50, Deuteronomy 21.50. Deuteronomy 21.50. These are priestly blessings. Remember the blessing of a priest can never be exchanged with the blessing of a parent. There are things I can declare and there are things that your parents can declare. I know there are people who have problems with their parents. Listen. You just need to understand this man is an authority. There are people who ask me, what about if my father cast me? And there is nothing wrong we did to him. He just cast us. Deuteronomy 21.50. What do we do? Remember where utterances of curses have been pronounced without legality of ground we have authority to nullify them there is a father who used to call his daughters prostitutes and all that and some of that began to manifest in their lives and we had to stand and nullify because the man was a drunkard so such utterances are countered by the word of God because other than your natural father you have your heavenly father and sometimes you not sometimes all the times the words of your heavenly father are powerful than the words of your earthly father are we together so you must believe the word of God and know that the word of God is powerful than the word of a man that died and pastor does it mean that I can only be blessed by a pastor a father who's born, born again no a father is an institution, is an office. Even a drunkard father can pronounce blessings. Because how can a wicked father pronounce curses and it happens? So you need to understand that institution as an office. Is a blessing what a father declares when he's about to die? No. A blessing is every utterance the father makes when he's alive. That's why today you can carry shopping and take it to your father and he will tell you, my son, may you never lack. That's a blessing. Are we together? Because there are many people who wait for their father to be on the bed to hear what they will say. That man might die having said nothing. So we, that's why we have the responsibility to honor them. Let them smell the roses when they can still smell and enjoy. Honor them. Bless them. Take care of them. Even if they are sick, take care of them. A man was dying and only one of his son took care of him. He Asked all the sons and said, This is the only one who will prosper. And true to his word, the son that took care of him when he was sickly and aging, the only son that prospered. Sometimes it might look like a burden when you are taking care of your sick parents, but that's the door of your blessing. Are you getting it? I've seen people who were left, and they kept quiet. You are the one paying medication. You are the one taking care of everything. And you have able brothers and sisters. Please let me tell you, you are sowing seeds of blessing. Anytime that woman wakes up and that man wakes up. And even if she will never talk, her heart knows that there is someone taking care of me. So never get tired, no matter how hard it is. A story was told of a man who got tired of his father. And he took him, he had a big car and decided to take him to the home of the elderly. He put him in the car and put his suitcase and he was there with his young boy. They drove to the home of the elderly and the man booked in his father because he said the man is old, you know, um, we can't communicate, he's becoming a burden in the house. So he booked him and paid and said, you know what, in case of anything, just call me, I'll be sending money. And as they were walking out of the gate, the son asked the father, so dad, when you grow old, I should also bring you here like grandfather. The father turned back the car and went and picked the father. And he realized, I am setting the wrong pattern. Some of us, as we are taking care of that parent, the children are watching. And they already know it is good to take care of our parents. Is someone getting me? So the priest can bless number two. Number three, you can also get blessings from godly leadership. The king's had the mandate to bless their subjects. First Kings 8 and verse 14. This is Solomon blessing his people. The kings also can bless. Then the king turned around and blessed the whole assembly of Israel. 
while all the assembly of Israel was standing. So kings could also bless. Kings could also bless. But these kings were authorities that came from the Lord. Solomon was ordained and he was a worshiper. Uh, because before he did this, he had sacrificed unto the Lord when you look at that story. So this was a priestly king. Because Solomon writes and says uh, in Ecclesiastes chapter number 1 and verse 1, listen to the words of the preacher, the king of Israel. Or listen to the words of the king, the, the king of Israel, son of David, the preacher. The words of the preacher, the son of David. So there was a priestly nature in Solomon. And that's why he had the ability also to bless now let us look according to matthew 6 33 triggers of manifestation of blessings triggers of manifestations of blessings are we together up to there are we together up to there so we have seen that number one there is a blessing there is the blessing and there is to be blessed a blessing is an a declaration an announcement mainly made by an authority the blessing, when that announcement lands, it becomes their blessing. It becomes like a power and a force and an energy that now provokes manifestation of physical results. And to be blessed is when you now begin to walk in the results and joy and prosperity. Three institutions can bless you. Family through the father, the priest, and the government through the king. So there are three things I want us to look at the book of Matthew 6.33. Triggers that provoke manifestations of true blessings triggers the first one there we see is seek fast seek fast that's the first trigger that name seek is to search that name fast is a language of priority seek is a language of searching kutafuta ni lugha ya kutafuta seek meaning that there is intention there is inspiration. There is labor. All these things are tied to it. The name fast is a language of priority. Priority. That in my heart I'm intentional to give priority to the kingdom. Seek fast. That's the first principle. Seek fast. The second one is the kingdom. The first one is seek ye first. Priority, motivation, intention. That's what it carries. It's something you are looking for. Something you are looking for because the kingdom is something precious. Number two, the kingdom. The kingdom. This scripture has nothing to do with heaven. When many people read it, they think we are seeking heaven. This is not heaven. When you read it in the Greek rendering, you understand what the writer is trying to tell the church to seek. The name kingdom there in the Greek is Basilia. Basilia. And that name means three things. That name kingdom is Basilia. It means kingship power, kingship power, authority, and dominion. It means kingship power, Number two, it means authority. And number three, it means dominion. Basilia. So what is the Bible saying? Be intentional. Put a priority to pursue the kingship power, authority, and dominion. Hey. Be intentional. Be motivated. Give priority to the kingship power, authority, and dominion. Because any other thing in this realm, you can only access it when you have power, authority, and dominion. Let me bring a home example. So I want to set up a business in Limuru. Witchcraft and divination rule the town. And I want to set a business in Limuru. And that is the spiritual DNA of the town. 
So the town is configured under certain powers. The success of my business is tied if I have another power, another authority, and another dominion. Whatever will make my business stand is when I have kingship power that no witch can come and bewitch my enterprise. Because I have another power. I have another authority that no diviner can interfere with my enterprise. And I have dominion that comes from above. So the Lord is trying to say, please, the things you are looking for, they don't come automatically there is a certain order when you seek the kingdom when you seek ye first give priority to the king's power to authority and dominion and number three his righteousness his righteousness the conditions acceptable to god that is what he calls his righteousness or the standards of god the conditions acceptable to god or the standards of God. So the number one is seek ye first. Number two, the kingdom. What is that kingdom? Is kingship power, authority, and dominion. And number three, his righteousness. The standards of God. When a man operates with this priority, look at what the Bible says. And all these things shall be added to you. What are these things? Begin from Matthew 6, 27 to understand these things. This is the pattern of scripture. Hallelujah. This is the pattern of scripture. Walking in true blessing. Which of you by worry can add one cubit to his stature? 28. So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field and how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so close the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not worry and say, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? Can I summarize this? Many of our motivation to go to work is so that we can meet these needs. Ile sikumtu poteza kazi. The first fear is not they have lost a job. The first fear is how will I eat? How will I pay my rent? How will I survive? So the Lord is tying up what we call the necessities of life. This is the inspiration of many people that wake up at five so that they can be in the office by eight and work until six and go back and arrive home at eight monday to friday today if someone offered to take care of these things tomorrow you will sleep it's a fact wangwe tu kutoka leo gavaime amua itakulipia rent utapewa ile chakula unataka na unaingia shop unachukua nguo zenye unataka na unapewa ka pocket money i would like to you 90% of you who write a resignation letter or you are going to behave in a manner to suggest you can fire me i no longer need this job why because i am always here most of you you, you don't go to job because of passion let's not lie to each other at you woke up at four because of passion no it's a lie it's because of oppression when the alarm rings i must arise and manifest so the lord is trying to give a kingdom pattern there is a secular pattern of how men access these things but there is a kingdom pattern of how these things follow men are we together? In the secular pattern, men are trained on a few things. And they are not bad. But when we begin to look at the kingdom pattern, we discover from Genesis, it was not the will of God for man to contend for necessities. 
when God planted man in Eden, he had provided everything that man needs. It was not the will of God. Even after the fall, the Lord still left man in a place of divine supply. But man had to come up with a system of work and sweat for him to take care of his needs. Now Jesus takes us back to another pattern. That when the priority is the kingdom, many people have translated this as serving in the church. Are we together? I've heard people say, seek ye first the kingdom. It means, kama ni kanisa inakuwa number one. When you love God, you'll not struggle serving God. But this means, begin to give attention to the power of God. Begin to give attention to the authority that comes from God. Begin to give attention to the dominion that comes from God. A man, I met a man and we were having a story. And he told me, I've, I've searched my family. And I've discovered is that in my family, there are, there are ancient altars of witchcraft. And pastor, I think I'm the only one who has broken the ceiling. And he asked me, what should I do? I asked him, what do you think you need to do? He said, for me, I've discovered it's a reality. There are altars speaking in my father's house. What should I do? I said, go and study the dominion that a believer has in Jesus. Because you can't raise another offering. You can't raise another altar. You just need to know he that is in me is greater than the witches in my village. So when a man begins to understand the authority that he carries in Christ, when a man begins to understand the kingship power that is in him, and a man observes the righteousness, the standards of God, these things will follow him. Are we together? Are we together? And by the way, this is a decision. You can decide to live an ordinary casual life. Ya kupigango na mababu alikufa wanatokea kwa ndoto. You can decide to live a life that all you have is a Christian name. But you can also get mad in the spirit and say there must be a change. I must manifest Jesus. Hallelujah. And I won't lie to you when these things, when a man operates in power, authority and dominion, these things, they shift from becoming a prayer item to becoming a management issue. Pastor, during COVID, it was a very tough time. And the church was very young. My wife was very pregnant. You know those are not very good words. You have a very young church. Your wife is very pregnant. And boom! Motahi Kagwe did what he did. One announcement. A young church is closed. And that is the time I had moved to full-time ministry. And now I am here, me, my wife, and my God. And then the Lord, and then my spiritual father called me. I love my father, Apostle Juma. He called me and said, how are you? I said, I'm okay. He said, Sasa ndo kipindi ya kujua kama So I knew my father was telling me, even me, <laughs> I am where you are. So don't think there will be help from the main church. Every church has been closed. And I laughed, you know, we were just laughing. And, and he said, anyway, we are praying for you. You are covered and God will come through. And I said, amen. And I remember looking at that, uh, looking at what we, we, where we were. At that time, I was still doing something at KBC. And at that time, even what they were giving me was not enough to pay rent. Now you are here. And the church is young. Nothing happens. You already know, even those who used to bless you, they now need blessings. And I said, now Lord, the hour cometh. And we had to strengthen my wife. And it was in that time when we began the Bible study in my bedroom. My wife was sleeping, resting, as I'm doing Bible study online. And God began to release ravens. People that I never knew. And the day of the delivery for my wife, I remember, someone called me on Wednesday. 
And she told me, Pastor, we want you to go and train. And the topic she was giving me to train was a very medical centered topic. I've never done medicine. And she said, we, the one who was meant to come could not come. And we have this training in Ethiopia. And we want you to come. Please send us your passport. We have to prepare your flight documents. That was on Wednesday. My flight was scheduled for, for Sunday. So I preached and then I went uh, to, 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 to Ethiopia. The, the night we landed on Monday, Ethiopia announced that all gatherings are illegal. And at that time, Kenya had announced on Thursday. I left, I left on Sunday and so th that announcement was made. So I went, stayed in Ethiopia, eating a lot of pilipili. -pili because that's what they eat. And after we finished our venture, we never trained by the way. We were just eating and sleeping. And then after the meeting, I was given 80,000 for eating and sleeping. And the Lord told me, that is the money you need to go and pay in the hospital for your wife's delivery. And we went to the hospital and I had saved 20,000 just in case. Because you know you can't form a WhatsApp group for Mtoto Amekuja. Because people will ask you for nine months you knew, you saw and no, you, you cannot be serious. Because it's not an accident. Hallelujah. And so I had my 20k just in case. And I remember that time we had some fundies on site. And the Lord asked me, are you expecting any emergency? I said no. He said even me there is no emergency. So he told me the money you have go and pay the fundies. So I paid everything. And sure to his word, there was no emergency. And then from that time, because people used to give an offering with my phone. And the Lord had instructed me, every money you get, build my church. Some people will send and say, that is for baby Tiffany. And I would like to you, God separated his offering from my provision. And we came out of COVID. No house was closed. No crisis. And we entered into a new church. What were we doing during COVID? prayer and the word these are the ingredients that give you power hallelujah it's not about where you are today it's about the power because every level of your life there will be contentions there will be battles there will be hindrances and there is a realm where men don't talk english you must come from a place of power, authority, and dominion. A woman called me and she told me, Pastor, my letter of promotion, every time it comes, it's always hidden. And people are promoted and I'm left. And she discovered who was responsible for the hiding. And so she entered into prayer. And when the letter was about to be released, the one who used to hide the letter got are transferred to another office and the one who came on day one she received a letter and asked who is this because someone was interfering with her promotion there is a level you need to understand even in the marketplace there is a realm you can't survive with papers you need to have seeking first the power the authority and dominion that men can sit on a boardroom to discuss your affair but you have already sat with God in a boardroom to neutralize that meeting. Not everyone is for us. Some people even just look at you and say, I don't know why I don't like you. We, can, we didn't come here to be liked. We came here to possess territories. We came here to conquer, to overthrow, and to take over. Hallelujah. So this is what, there is a level of your graduate. This is what gives men advantage in this realm. There's a level you reach and you discover men don't come to the office in suits. They are altars backing them up. When they sit on boardrooms, you can even sense the authority. I met a lady who used, she told me, Pastor, I got born again, I was in London. And I used to work with this secular artist. And she, we, we met in Utawala. She said, I was sitting in the room. 
And she said, one of the secular artists used to get in a room and you sense a demonic presence. And the man, they were in Netherlands. He lost his ring. They had to close the hotel for the man to get that ring. And he became hysterical. He said, I can't perform without this ring. And she said, when she got born again, is when she understood this was not just entertainer. People were coming from places of ordinations. Are you getting me? One of my mentors in business told me he attended a meeting in Uganda. And in that meeting, they, they was not meeting believers. When he sat in that meeting, he says the atmosphere shifted. They were talking about billions, transactions. He told me, sir, there is a level of engagement. You must go with your altar. You must know what gives you spiritual backup. The day you get tired of your level, that day is when you'll begin to seek power, authority, and dominion. Hallelujah. A man of mine used to live in poverty. In a serious. So he took a 40 day fast. And, and the Lord just told him, contend for your inheritance. So he had one prayer. During the day, a phone call was made. And it was made from, I think, the chief's office. And they said, we have found your dad's will and a title deed of a land, 40 acres in Rongai. Not this one. The other one in Akuru. And he said, we don't know how this thing landed here. But that night, he saw an ancient man sitting on a three-legged stool saying, Vitu zako tumeziachilia. And that land, it was so prime that today it's a different story for that man. I don't know if someone is getting me. Seek the kingdom. There are manifestations in your life that cannot happen until you begin to walk in power, authority, and dominion and keep the standards of heaven. That is how the saints are going to arise. I have a few minutes. Somebody says, seek the kingdom. Please turn to that neighbor. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, don't look for a powerful pastor only. Become a powerful saint. That is my intention. Are we together? That's my intention. That I can come where you are doing business and I know you have conquered the whole street. I can come where you are working and I know you have conquered the whole building. I can come where God has planted you and I know no one can ever touch you. A lady entered into prayer. She used to work in the county. Not this one but Nairobi. And there was a plan to eliminate her. Because she was not corrupt. So they realized and she's employed by the government. So you can't fire her if there is no cause. So they realized the best way is to kill her in a road accident. And they went, consulted their altars, did everything. And they were told she will die. And she traveled to Kericho. The Lord instructed her in that journey to take a three day fast. So all along the journey she was in prayer. As they were leaving Kericho, the driver fell asleep and said, Mi atanaskia tuhue, tukufe wote. And the car veered off and hit a ditch. No one got harm. No one died. She left and scratched. On Monday, when she showed up in the office, one of the women involved in that orchestration came and knelt down and said, forgive me. And she asked, what's the problem? She said, we had gathered, we had purpose to take you out. Forgive me because now, if you didn't die, we are in trouble. And she looked at her and said, who are you with? She got all the details. And some of the people were the closest to her. You never know who sits with you. Some of them, you don't know what they are planning. But when a man has power, when a man has authority, when a man has dominion, you can enter in Akesha and begin to cancel plans of the wicked. By the time you wake up on Monday, the Lord begins to reveal you the demonic assignment that was upon your life. We are not at the masses of any man. We are under the masses of heaven. And I want to declare, may you begin to pursue the power, the authority and the dominion for the sake of your family, for the sake of your children, for the sake of your enterprise, for the sake of your career. We live in a world where men are concerned Consulting mediums and all strange of powers. But as for you, may the Lord be lifted. Nothing shall touch you. Your word will be low. You will talk and they will know a son of God has spoken. 
time ya heshima kurudi kwa washirika ni sasa mambo ya kutorokanga ma anti imeisha unaende hiyo geshagi na unajua huyu anti ni murogi na unamsalimia unamwambia uhoro wa madhiko we sawa unamwambia umaumia ubarikiwe sana they can look you straight in the eye because another priestly good has entered the church must begin to understand our contention is in the contention of priestly good that's why the day you got born again you became a royal priestly good and you need to exercise your priestly good there is a time for robes but there is a time for efforts some things in our communities will not die until a man pursues power some uncles you will not win them through a court law courts will never work some uncles where they are coming from before they show up in a courtroom is another area someone must come from another place munakutana on the convergence of power hey see ku fast say you wait you ongeza shimo kwa mshipi na kuna kitu ina grow kwa roho no see ku konda hapa no as you shrink you expand triggers of manifestation of blessing now I'm about to enter into very serious areas. This one in a cut to end next week. What are riches? Because many times blessing manifest. And when they manifest, we begin to say, this man is rich. This man is rich. Riches is accumulation of resources and possession of value. Riches. Accumulation of resources and possessions of value riches are accumulation of resources and possessions of value i'll just deal with riches and then maybe on sunday we'll deal with wealth is that okay so that i can leave you something to chew accumulation of resources and possessions of value genesis 13 2 abraham was rich in silver gold and in cattle that means Abraham. The Bible says Abraham was very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. This is what he had accumulated. This is what he had accumulated. Accumulation can be a product of divine help and grace. Accumulation. And this is where I want you guys to listen to me very carefully. Accumulation can be a product of divine help and grace. What do I mean? So, we have declared blessings over your life. Doors are opening. Resources are coming your way. And all that begins to happen. But what I discovered, maintenance of what you have accumulated is a product of three things. Maintenance of what you have accumulated is a product of three things. Number one, laws. Laws. Number two, principles. And number three, disciplines. Number one, laws. Number two, principles. And number three, disciplines. I want to lay a good foundation. By prayer, by prayer, by seeking him first the kingdom, the blessings can manifest. Are we together? The blessings can manifest. And we cannot deny that you are working with tangibility of results. The shop has begun. The business is doing well. And all these things are already taking place. I like what one of, I was listening to one of the preachers, Dr. Tudor Bismarck. And he said, the next level after faith is management. The next level after faith is management. What does that mean? Faith will deliver. A good example. We prayed for tense, sound, and faith delivered. Our growth is connected not to faith, but to management. So we have taught the church faith. 
and people have received but they don't know the laws the principles and the disciplines that provoke growth that's why when we come to the level of riches accumulation even men that don't know God can accumulate people that don't know God they can accumulate and that's why sometimes when the church is loud on possessions, there are people who look at it and feel like, I don't need God to possess. I can accumulate without God. Because many of us have accumulated, but we don't understand the laws, the principles and the disciplines that control expansion. Do you know even in church, we all preach the same Bible. You know that? We all sing the same songs. Other than grace that is deployed upon men, you sit with some pastors, you will discover they understand management. And so their growth is not accidental. They are all anointed, but one has abandoned the laws, the principles, and the disciplines of growth. Hallelujah. And that's why I have met people I know who pray more than me. I can tell because I prayed with them and I got tired. I have met people who preach and I listen I say, Jesus. In fact, one of them had opened a school of wealth to teach on wealth. I felt like telling him, please close the school. Manifest wealth, then teach. Because he was teaching the school of wealth in a bed sitter. So you have no stature to teach wealth. Chris Kirubi said, only one pastor can pray for him. <laughs> only one. Because that pastor has handled billions. So they can talk on billion level. <laughs> and that pastor prayed for Chris and he got healed and he paid for two thanksgiving in Nakuru. One. Because there is a level where men weigh you according to results. Hallelujah. Laws, principles, and disciplines. Please tell that neighbor, neighbor, faith will deliver. But management will sustain. In 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 10, we get a very serious principle. 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 10. That God is a master. Now, may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruit of your righteousness. The principle here is God gives seeds. But you must understand the law, the principle and the discipline of planting, harvesting, planting again and harvesting. So if today God wants to change our lives, he will plant a seed in every man's hand. How you manage that seed will dictate how far you go with life. Let me begin with, what is a law? A law is a binding custom or practice. A binding custom or practice. Laws are very sensitive because you either align to them but they will never align to you. A law is abiding custom or practice. How many know gravity? You see, if today I decide to walk here and think I will reach Eugene, I will fall. No matter how anointed I am, there is a law that is called the law of gravity. So I have to abide and use the stairs. By ignoring the law, the law will work against me. So laws must be understood. Principles are fundamental truths. Fundamental truths that serve as foundation for chain of reasoning. They are fundamental truths that serves as foundation for, foundation for chain of reasoning.
let me explain it. They are fundamental truths that serve as foundation for chain of reasoning. Fundamental truths that serve as foundation for chain of reasoning. That's why there are people who tell you, I'm a principled man. I can't take bribe because these truths help him in how he makes decisions. We're having a transaction somewhere and a guy came and told us, you know, uh, we can bring the thing, then we lie on, on the capacity so that the port does not charge us a lot of money. And then after that, we clear with less money and then all that. And he said, it's a very easy thing because they don't know this machine, so we, we lie. And then we reminded each other, our core principle is integrity. We told the guy, we won't lie. Let us pay what we need to pay. But we'll not die. We'll not lie. Because those fundamental truths affect how we reason and they affect how we act. Are we together? Disciplines are practice. Practices of obeying rules. Practices of obeying rules. Can I share some few laws? Practices of obeying rules. Can I share some few laws? Yes? Now, when we come to riches, you'll discover that I may not quote many scriptures. Now we are assuming you have access of accumulation. Now my point here is, how do you move from that level to another? The first one is called the law of cause and effect. The law of cause and effect. Every result has a cause. Every result has a cause. Sometimes we admire what men are driving, where men are living, but we don't know the cause of their results. Behind every winner, there is a story. Someone said, show me your medals. You will intimidate me. Show me your scars. You will inspire me. Show me the distance between your scars and your medals. You will transform me. I'll repeat. Show me your medals. You will intimidate me. So if all I show you are the things I've achieved, you'll be intimidated. But if I take you back and show you the process of what I have achieved, the distance between my scars, the nights I never slept, the times I made losses and but I decided not to quit. The times when even auctioneers came on my door but I still negotiated with the bank. I will transform you. Now we live in an age where men are parading medals. Very few are parading scars. And when they parade their medal, they have one hashtag. Maze ni God. In this life, Nothing just happens. There is a cause. Nothing just happens. I read this statement and it was very deep for me. Rich people are rich because they focus on doing things that make them rich. Like accumulation of assets. While poor people are poor because they focus on things that make them poor. Like accumulation of liabilities so rich men <laughs> rich men are not rich accidentally they are practices and disciplines and things they do that have made them rich and many of them that's why many rich people are very personal with their money because they didn't collect the money. You know, kuna ile levo inafikanga, watu wenyo amesota, wana feel entitled kwa vitu za watu wakona do. Ankoli yangu ni tajiri na hata nisaidi yangi. Listen, no one is mandated to help you. That man wakes up at four daily. He has never had a holiday. Wewe unawatch Afcon ukikula pokchoma. That man does not even know. Come on, I call semis and my quarters. And then you want to be helped. 
That man does not even know the last time he watched news. Because there is a discipline of practice. Wewe unaishingini ka uko holiday 24-7. And then you place a demand. Hata kuna ankoli yangu na kuanga tawa tatu saidi yangi. No one will help you. No kisaidi wa unanunua iPhone. It's a, it's a, it's a liability. Are we together? Alafu natuekia kale kawimo kana kuanga online. If your money is not enough to do what you want to do, eat it. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, neighbor, success is not accidental. It's painful. Are we together? So, so one of the mindsets of the rich is that they invest in assets, not liabilities. In fact, I need to ask you, do you need a car now? Do you know maintaining a car fuel and the car depreciates in value versus if you buy land that appreciates in value? So, so you buy a car you are, you are, you are, and you buy it with a loan, your income is already a prayer item because you want to make a statement. You, 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 don't, you don't have generational curses. You just need wisdoms and change of priorities. The day you buy a car, there must be reasons as to why you need one. It's a liability. It's not an asset. I know because of being in a third world country, gari ni kuomoka. But when you have the mindset of the rich, a car is a liability. Hallelujah. Yeah. You can do kahaya. You can do uba. And who said kuka kwa matatu in a reduced value amtu? Nani lisema kubebo na nduthi in a reduce your value? That's why the greatest thing we need to work on is our mindset. Somebody said the law of cause and effect. Things don't happen. Your current success is connected to past actions. And so is your current failure. If you spend the past bettering yourself, the law dictates that success is inevitable. Your future is shaped by your now activities. Your future is shaped by your now activities. Like if you ask me, yesterday I attended, attended Benny Hinn's meeting and he made something very powerful. He said, Mtoto na Maliza form 4 na Peleko driving school. Nahana Gari. Because there is a culture in this land after Form 4 computer package. Driving school. But what other skills can that person get that can even improve his thinking and his engagement in life? Number two, the law of reciprocity. The law of reciprocity. This is the law of giving. It is in giving that we receive. Luke 6.38 there is the power of giving and there is the law of giving. Those are two different things. When you apply the law, you will realize the power. Many people know the power, but they don't know the law. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Go and study every rich enterprise. They are not small on giving. Manu Chandari is not born again. But the guy has mastered the law of reciprocity. He's one of the biggest philanthropists in Kenya. This is a law. It's, <laughs> I don't know about you. Ushai realize what wa mesota. Ata waki wanado wana kuangwa mesota. Yeah. I had a friend, he was a musician. Every time Hanado Baka to a concert and a lipua na lipua. I love an ambia maze bro ni fair. No mamis to melipua. As kuna jua sina do na juas a home. They always have excuses. There is a law. It is in giving that we receive. I made a decision in my life that anytime God moves me to another level. 
I will never sell the things of the former level. I'll always be a blessing to somebody. So one of the guys that has been praying for me to move to another level is Prof. So he even came and told me, Pastor, Igari yako na juwa kuna level inafikanga, inanza kuitisha service. Like, I know where you are going. So, so, and we made it with my wife. We decided anytime God blesses us, we'll never commercialize what he gave us in that level. And it has what? I've seen people that support men and they have never lacked. Why? This is a law. Number three, the law of belief and expectation. The law of belief and expectation. Belief will determine the action that you take and the results you get. Believe will determine the actions that you take and the results you get. I have grown with this principle, which is very simple. Whatever you do, give it your all that you can invite men to see your failure if it doesn't succeed. Believe will determine the actions that you take and the results that you make. Believe. Nobody will believe in your dream more than you believe in it. And many times, be, be, dreams are misunderstood on their foundation's face. Many times, dreams are misunderstood on their foundation's face. But keep building. Are we together? Poverty is a mindset first. And poverty controls how you manage resources. Poverty is a mindset it is a mindset of scarcity. It is not the absence of accumulation. Poverty is a mindset. Someone said ghettos don't make men. But it is men who make ghettos. Have you ever realized the transition between Kawangware and Kileleshwa? Yes? Okay, what do you mean in a kuanga sudden. <laughs> Unamaliza ma flats, unaingia tu pali, no no na mentality. Ua. How many remember there was a time the government had offered to build houses in Kibera? And they wanted to move the guys from Kibera and take them to the houses. And the houses were built and men were given the houses. And these are the stories. What the people did, number one, vitu zote za chuma walingoa, wakauza kama scrap metal. Number two, watu walihama wakarentisha nyumba. Because the government was changing their lifestyle before changing their mindset. Unless there is a change of mindset, there can never be a change of lifestyle. I met a woman of God who moved from Donholm. They used to live there and the Lord blessed them and she moved to Runda. And every Saturday she used to go to Donholm Kupelek and go dry cleaner because it is cheap. So one day a man close to his husband akakutana nae akamwambia bibi yako Alihamia runda. Lakini mawazo ni adon home. <laughs> I know I'm talking to real men. Yeah. Jaribu nunulia mama yako gas. Bado utakuta anapika na kuni. Because you must change her mindset. Before you change her lifestyle. How many know that? Bado amenunua maka. Na maka ni expensive kuliko gas. No majaribu kumwambia how ni hesabu. Kwa sababu we grew in a place gas ilikuwa ya wado. wado. So that thing has never left your mother. Okay, let, let me. <laughs> Somebody say the law of belief and expectation. That's why you must expose your mind to books. Expose your mind to environments. Expose your mind to places that matter. And then I came across a law that was written by an old philosopher. And his name was Pat 
Parkinson's law. It is a whole chapter, a whole book that was written. This is a man that came up with philosophies of commerce. Parkinson's law. And he says, when people earn more money, they tend to spend more money, which keeps them in the same financial situation throughout their lives. When people earn more money, they tend to spend more money, which keeps them in the same financial situation throughout their lives. And he said, to become rich, you must make sure that your expenses increases at a slower rate than your income. To become rich, you must slow down your expenses and increase your income. Let me bring it home. Sometimes we think when we get more money, our problems will reduce. And sometimes, today I can bet whatever you are earning in 2024 is not what you are earning five years ago. Is that true? And how many remember kuna temulko nambia? Chani tumia pato kama example. The first time I went to Pato's shop, he told me, Pastor Tunio Mbe to pate rent. And God was very faithful. He was not even asking for profit. A lipe fundi no a rent. Guess what? The Lord was faithful. The next thing he came and told me, na mini mungu. Kwa sababu sasa nataka ku expand. When he expanded, he now came and said, kuna machine ni meona. Na hizo machine ni kinunua. Zitakuwa zimeni sort. Guess what? He bought the machines. After the machines, he said, Mungu ameniambia, according na Isaiah, extend the cords of your dwelling. Now another prayer we are making, na amini Mungu kwa pesa ni expand. And he has expanded. Now he met me again. He said, e levels as a pastor, me atastaki kufikiria in millions, nataka kufikiria in hundreds of millions. I'm believing God. Bado amesota. Dewana alikuwa amesota. Akiaminia Mungu rent. Saizi ame expand but bado ameso. Okay. Kuna mtu amepa gari mpya na amesota. Si tukimwangalia tunashindwa umesotaje. The point is as he grows in finances, he also grows in expenses. So for you to be rich, you must begin to tame the growth of your expenses. How can a man do that? If today you are living in a bed sitter and you get an upgrade of your salary, instead of moving to a two bedroom, ujaze viatu kwa bedroom. Dokai umeomoka. Stay in the same bed sitter and save what you would have spent in a two bedroom. Until the day a two bedroom will become a necessity. Am I speaking to anyone? Some of you kuna rumoja. Haina kitu. Lakini tu usiki yangu unaishi ruaka. Sina shida na watu wa ruaka. Msikose kuja church. But where you are, you are able to survive with a certain budget. It is called growing your finances. There are, people don't have a problem with dreams. People have a problem with money. If I ask all of you here, everyone will tell me, Pastor, can you say Kaezo Aguzo iturudishie offering? Yawania. Meza enda mbali sana. But the problem is not the absence of a dream. The problem is that there is no resources and resources are generated. Am I speaking to anyone? And let me say this, being in a third world, now I'm speaking wisdom, being in a third world country, sometimes you need employment to generate financial muscles. You have a dream, but you go to a place employed five years so that you can get the seed capital. I know people have always said, oh, an employer bribes you with the salary to forget your dream. Listen, some of us need to begin from somewhere. And there is a blessing of that. Number two, common disciplines of rich people. Now we are in disciplines. I'm done with the laws. Common disciplines. Very simple things. 
but they will take you very far. Common disciplines of rich people. Number one, time management. Time management. Many poor people don't value time. You tell them to meet at 9, they will come at 10. And then they will tell you there is no hurry in Africa. Listen, some of us, time is very valuable. Time management. Time is the only thing that all of us were given. No one has 26 hours. Everyone has a 24 hour. From today, value them that value your time. Number two, hard work. It's a display. Kazingumu. There is an age. Kamo Jafika 50. Zoya Kulala 6 to 7 hours. Kamo Jafika 50. Zoya Kulala. Nasi Kulala ukifanya vdu zaufala. Let every time count. Hard work. This life you can't move. With all these things we are seeing outside here. Someone must fold their sleeves. Someone must be ready to invest energy for there to be results. Hard work. We are raising a very lazy generation. I'm waiting for them in their 40s. The principles and the laws of life and the disciplines of life will never change because there is a new generation. Hard work. Somebody say hard work. And I was studying there is a demon responsible for laziness. And I discovered when laziness hits a generation, they begin to look for avenues of making money quickly. And many of these avenues are not legal. That's why wash wash is on the rise. Quote and unquote, forex is on the rise. The conversations that we don't want to have as Kenya is not about femicide. I'm sorry that you know, nobody has a right to take another person's life. Whether they are prostitutes or not. You have no right over another person's body. But there is a conversation we have refused to face. It is called, where are our morals going? The day we'll have that conversation, our girls will not die carelessly. And I'm not saying that they are dying because of they say there are many killed in marriage setups and all that. But I'm, 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 I'm coming to think. We have begun to parade our girls as objects of pleasure. That all a man needs is money. And all a girl needs is a man with money. Listen to all our radios. How I pray that those who are running with the campaign of femicide, which is a very good campaign, can go to the root cause and begin to tell the radio stations we cannot propagate some agenda that socialites are the ones parading how a local Kenyan girl ought to look like. It's until we address these matters that we'll find solution. Because when we begin to parade our women as pools of pleasure and parade men as financiers of pleasure, chaos will intensify. And, and I'll give you a very good example. In America, I was studying a documentary on racism. And they said, majority of the black movies and what we call gangster songs, majority of those songs are sponsored by the white elites. So that now we portray the black man as an irresponsible and then the black women are portrayed as immoral and objects of sex. And so by the time you watch those gangster songs, hip hop and rap, all our women, black women are portrayed as objects of pleasure. Now that's America. When we come to Kenya, the conversation is a socialite will go online and say it doesn't matter how he looks like as long as he has money. So we have reduced the value of our women to material things. It's what you drive, where you live. And that's why now someone will be invited by a stranger and the first thing they want to know, how much will you give me? Where am I coming? And until we address the core of this matter, we will lift placards, say stop femicide, 
And after two days, another event will happen. Because the root cause of our cancer is our moral chaos. Am I talking to anyone? We all know that. We all know that if we analyze the situation, the whole B and B's are the modern day brothels. People are not meeting there for business. They are meeting there for sex. Let's call it as it is. A willing client and a willing seller. So it is the chaos of our fabric. Because I was asking myself, I know there are people who give you money for money rituals. Because men don't just give money. But their blood can be used for rituals. There are people who sleep with people and they tell conversation and also tell our men a man is not a man because he has accumulation of papers and he has accumulation of metal. A man is a man when he walks in integrity and faithfulness. And talk to our sisters and tell them if you rely on a man because of money, yes, the economy is hard. Yes, life is hard. But there are alternatives. Am I speaking to anyone? Yeah, because now we might turn it to become a gender war. We have seen women put mchele on men. What is the purpose? How many men have died? You black out and you're driving on the road. This is not a gender war. This is a moral war. Kenya, we need to sit on the table and begin to talk to our daughters. We need to stop these socialites from making it look like it doesn't matter who you sleep with. What matters is the life you live. And we need to begin to tell our daughters and our men, values are more important. Are we together? Yes. So we are running away from that conversation. We want to socialize it, but the matter is deeper. Even if they come up with laws to curb B and Bs, laws have never curbed morals. Yeah. The same parliament that has illegalized prostitution Drive in Nairobi at 7. Prostitutes stand outside parliament. The same house that has said it's illegal. They are there because their clients are also there. So may the church arise because we need to navigate directions. Hallelujah. In the month of February and March we shall handle the matters of attacks on marriages. Because we have to talk to our girls. Man is not everything. Your destiny is very important. And for all the women, let me speak to you as a man. No man gives you money if he's not getting value for his money. It means whatever he's getting is more valuable than what you're giving. And this is not a women issue. It's a society issue. Are we together? Because I also believe men have a responsibility to guard. I have a young daughter. So I'm not speaking as an outsider. I speak as a man that is raising a daughter. And I have to keep in her head, men are not weighed by their wallet. Men are weighed by their values. Even if a billionaire comes and he doesn't have values, you can walk out even if you're living in a bed sitter. So we must tone down on some of these things. I don't know how I went there. Somebody say hard work. Somebody say hard work. Yeah, because now hii ndio inafanya sasa wanaume wanaanza kujiambia hakuna haja hata ya ku struggle wewe tafuta pesa they even say you look for money women will follow you you follow women money will never follow you because i was also asking myself and maybe we'll have this conversation off camera what gives another human authority that they can treat you like an object but the, any man that is violent or woman that is violent, the issue is not the violence. There must be something. How have I empowered that person to a point that they feel like they own me? That I tell that person the relationship is over and they tell me I will kill you. How have I empowered that person to feel like he owns me or she owns me? What makes another person feel they can just say I'll kill you? Then you must retreat and ask, how much have I empowered you to think you own me? Is it because I don't work? Is it because possibly you think you pay all the bills that now you feel like I'm part of your possession? I think there must be a conversation because I've had people say, okay, listen, God is on our side. God is on our side. Before you met whoever, your life was going on. You are adding weight. 
Getting children is not a curse. So let no man look at you and tell you, we sasa nikikwacho utaenda wapi? Tukutane February. Jo nimeanza kukasirika. But anyway, let's have the conversation. We are sorry for all the women that have died. We are sorry for what is happening. But let's not be afraid to call the things that we need to call them out for the cancer to be healed. Our radio stations are loud on Mpango Akando. Our radio stations are loud on sexual perversion and immorality. Our radio stations, the society has been framed to begin to have a certain ideology about women. Our, our socialites are already running a conversation that if you need me, let your wallet be heavy. And until we begin to change that conversation, some of these narratives will be very hard to divert. Number, common discipline of rich people, then we finish. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, this is a rich people conversation. So number one is time management. Number two, hard work. Number three, savings. Tell your neighbor, savings. Every rich man saves. They never know what the future holds for. Number four, planning. That's why I believe if you are rich here, you must have a diary. Not just one, but two. One for the home and one for the office. Planning. Planning to fail is already planning failure. Number five. Rich men avoid death like a plague. Rich men avoid death like a plague. Uko kwa Shylock. Uko kwa Fuliza. Namba ile uliomba ya talo ulitupa. You know. They avoid death like a plague. And deaths are managed. My wife always tell me, if we can't afford it, let's leave it. It's a very tough law, but I'm learning to adapt it. If you can't afford it, leave it until the day you'll afford it. Number six, I don't know which one. They use a budget religiously. What were impulse buying bonus fuel? They use a budget religiously. They use a budget religiously. They plan their money. They know what and budget will help you to kick out necessities and things that are liabilities. Saizi na economy, okona drinking chocolate, coffee, milo, asali, scary, boss. Nichai tu nataka. Nunua kale kaneska fika three in one. Maisha isonge mbele. They invest always, especially when young. They begin investments, especially when young. Buying of shares. Putting your money in government bonds. If you have no idea, put your money where it grows. They say there are two people, fools and wise men. Fools put their money in the bank. Wise men they borrow the money of fools to make more money. I don't want to ask you where you are. But in a line of the bank, there are two people. One is coming for your money. The other one is putting their money. Put your money where it will grow. Unless you're putting it in a fixed account, there are many avenues where your money can grow. And I discovered this, there are no secrets of getting rich, but only disciplines that produce rich men. You can write that down. There are no secrets of getting rich, but only disciplines. Only disciplines. There are no secrets. Rich accumulation is not accidental, it's intentional. Allow me to give you this and I'll share this in all our groups and even our page. Some of the common, the mentality, and this begins to shape your principle. I'll just read very quickly. The poor versus the rich. Poor people, success is unimportant. They even curse it. Your ten vanity. Rich people, success is an obligation. They take responsibility. Poor people, blame others. You know my dad left. You know... My boyfriend broke up with me. He went with all our savings. Rich people take responsibility. You can have an excuse to be where you are. But you can take responsibility. Poor people spend money. Rich people invest money. Poor people, they refuse to learn. No books. No conference. Rich people, continuous learning. Poor people, focus on the past. Focus on the past. I feel like emphasizing focuses on the past. Rich people, they focus on the future. Someone said, we don't live for the future, we live from the future. Poor people are income driven. Rich people are net worth driven. How much? 
will we make at the end of this? Poor people think small. Rich people think big. Poor people fear change. Rich people, they embrace change. I'm about to read something very powerful. Poor, poor people criticizes. By the way, that's very true. When I was in campus, I was criticized. I was like, BMW is blue. 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 Those are poor people. But rich men, they compliment. You can't insult what you're praying for. Poor people waste time. Turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, neighbor. Poor people waste time. Rich people buy time. Can I tell you how people buy time? One day we were having a conversation with my wife, I told her, the reason why we employ house helps is not because we are cripples. It's because the time I would have taken to clean the viombo and the time I would have taken to clean the house and clean the clothes, that time I can invest in a business. So if the business is able to give me 20000 and I'm paying this person maybe 10000 I have earned 10000 Do you understand the matrix now? So that's how you buy time. Don't do everything. Create a place. If I'm able to spend six hours and make 40000 let me pay someone that can do what I was meant to do in the six hours and pay them 10000 I've already made 30000 Some of you, you want to be an octopus. Your hands are all over. Poor people think about problems. Rich people solve problems. Poor people have single stream of income. Rich people have multiple streams of income. Poor people are work driven. But rich men are goal driven. I'll share this with you. Next Sunday, we shall open up on the mystery of wealth. Is that okay? I feel like what I've shared is enough. So I don't want to add anything else. But next Sunday, we shall share on the mystery of wealth. I just want us to make a prayer according to Matthew 6.33. It all begins from there. Have you learned something? Is it helpful? Is it insightful? Yes, I'm believing God that we are going to raise men. I like what the wife of Mr. Sankara said one day. People that speak in tongues and speak in cash. Hallelujah. That's my prayer. We will not suffer here because we are going to a better place. We will enjoy here and enjoy there. Because it's not the will of God that we suffer. Can we stand up on our feet just for a few minutes? Uh, even as we prepare to give. Just for a few minutes, I just want you to make a prayer. In your own personal way. If you are sitting next to your wife, I don't know what you are believing God for. In fact, okay, let me do this. Let me do this. How many of you are doing business? Everyone that is in the marketplace. My goodness, is almost the whole church. We bless God for you. So some of these sessions are very powerful to you. If you are sitting next to your wife, hold her hand. Because I want you to make prayers of agreement. If you are single, hold your hands, the wife of your partner by faith. And agree on their behalf. Hallelujah. And I want you to just have a conversation with your partner. And those who are single, have a conversation with yourself. And ask yourself, what are some of the things, financially, goals that I've set for myself this year? What are some of the things that I want to achieve this year? It's just a general question. What are some of the laws and disciplines and, and practices that I need to embrace? What are some of the things that have purpose that 2024 will not come to an end? Before I enter into that level. And then in the next few minutes begin to mention them to the Lord. This is a very personal prayer. We are not just jumping in the ear without a plan. We have targets. There are companies that need to be opened this year. There are businesses that need to enter into the next level this year. There are divine strategies that need to be deployed. 
Some of us, faith has already delivered. You need the grace of management and the grace of a manager so that you can enter into the next level. Some of us, nothing has happened. Your womb must begin to deliver. Some of us, they are in the place of transitions and decisions must be made. Wherever you are, I declare according to Matthew 6.33, the power of God is coming upon you. The authority of Zion is coming upon you. The dominion of the living God is coming upon you. I declare the church of Jesus will begin to operate with the standards of eternity. We will not be a mediocre people. Excellence will be our portion. Integrity will be our portion. Delivery will be our portion. I declare a proton anointing that upon your life is a beginner's anointing in the mighty name of Jesus. May this light today, may it begin to give you the wisdom of strategy, the wisdom of structure, the wisdom of systems. May this wisdom today begin to give you the understanding of how to navigate through your finances. I declare in the name of Jesus, where there were battles, let the authority of Zion come upon you. None of you shall close. You are moving from one level of glory to another. May the markets of the globe begin to open up. May the wisdom of Zion and the wisdom of the merchants May the aggressiveness of the marketplace be upon your life. Them that they had abandoned their dreams, I declare receive the grace today. Receive the energies of Zion. Receive the strategy and the blueprint of eternity in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the networks of your doors, let them begin to open up. I release destiny helpers. Any man tied to your assignment, may they begin to show up. 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 In the name of Jesus. Let me just share this wisdom as we are standing. One. I sat down with Elijah. And we were discussing something called. The curse. Of the founder. The curse of the founder. There is a level, especially those that are in business, where you must allow skillful, competent people to take over from you. Because sometimes we kill our own business because of our attachment. In this land, though it is a it's a, it's a company. There was a company that certain investors came. Though whatever they produce is not, they, they, do, they deal with alcohol. But I'm just giving it as an example. And so the investors came and they told the owners, for you to compete with the leading company, you must grow your capacity. And they said, we want to buy 60% shares of this company. And you will be able to compete with EABL. I know we are in church. It's, it, I'm just giving it, it, please consider it as a business class. Are we together? But the one given the money said, this company we have begun from scratch. And we can't let it go. The people were pumping almost 60 billion. And they wanted them to release the management. So that they can structure it into a competence that can bring, uh, you know, relevance even globally. They said we don't want it. They were almost shutting the business. You must reach a place and know when that thing outgrows you. Someone getting me? This is free wisdom. You must reach a place and know when you need to employ a manager and sit as a director. And allow them to run the vision. Some of us, we don't even understand the age of social media. 60% of Kenyans are on TikTok. You, you are not on TikTok because of your age. But your market is in TikTok. So your age is a disadvantage. You need a 22 year to help you manage TikTok. I'm on TikTok, but I don't even have the software on my phone. I just called a man and told him, 
take me to TikTok. Because we must begin to understand times are changing very fast. And part of the things that happen, many believers don't move with the changing of times. Wisdom number one. Wisdom number two. There is something we call the law of accessibility. Somebody say the law of accessibility. What does that law dictate? Uh, let me share my personal story. I needed a facility from the bank and I have no assets because all my money is in charge. My father, biological, gave me his land as security to access the facility. Now, for me to get the land my father has, it would have taken me around 10 to 15 years of saving and investing. But that land, my father has leased it to some people because he cannot farm. So it is a, what do I call it? A dead asset. I have an idea. I don't have money. But a man has a dead asset and is my father. Why should I struggle? Some of the things you are looking for, they are next to you. You just need to open your eyes and apply the law of accessibility. Is someone getting me? This is the mindset I want us to grab. Some of us want to farm. Your mother cannot farm. Why can't you partner with her? Let her become the manager of the farm. As you work in Nairobi, every Friday, go to the garden. Begin with one acre. Test the ground. Go to another acre. By the time two years are over, the money you are making will be a different story. We must begin to engage creativity. 2018 World Bank report says the next millionaires are coming from agriculture. Today, you invest in brick and mortar. I'm speaking as your father now. This may not be deep, but it is wisdom. Anyone that invests in brick and mortar, it takes 13 to 17 years to return your money. With the current affordable housing, rentals are not the place you put your money. By 2030, houses will be so cheap in Kenya that even where you are renting, they will give you a deal and tell you pay to own. So, because of the continuing growth of counties, there is demand for food. But you cannot farm like your grandfather. You wait for the cow to drop the droppings, then you use it as mature, manure. The only farming that will work is modern farming. Modern. That in one acre you can put greenhouses. Put a semi-permanent water collection center that you don't rely on the rain and you don't rely on the sun. You are able to grow your economy. My master is here. That's what she does in terms of advising on agriculture. I want our minds to open up. Are we together? There are things by next year we should not be talking about. The days of looking at your degree and saying, Pastor, I'm not employed. A degree is an evidence you can think. It's not a sign you need to be employed. Only 14% are employed. Every year we produce 267 graduates, but the government can only employ 14%. Meaning that only 30,000 access employment. Where do the rest go with their degrees? We must begin to think different. Is someone getting me? You must begin to think different. There are jobs, but they are in your mind. The Bible says, and the Lord opened the eyes of Haggai to see the waters. May the Lord open your eyes to begin to see the resources that have been surrounding your life. May the Lord open your eyes to see the opportunities that are around your life. Someone in your village has five acres and they are doing nothing. And they are willing to give you for 50,000 for a whole year to farm. You don't need to work and buy and save 10 million to buy. Enter into a five-year contract. By the time you are done farming for five years, you can even buy that property. Let my generation think differently. Fold your sleeves. Mikono chafundo ikona pesa. Tell that neighbor, tell me you slay meisha. Time ya kuweka kucha zimefika huku mbele ya nita zimeisha. Nasi ya dinakuingilia zisemi ukonazo. 
Hata mpaka tunashindwa mpaka ku type na typing hivi. How do you work? Time ya kuslay meisha is time to put our hands on the plow and begin to work. I declare none of you shall be poor. By these principles, may the Lord begin to expand your territories. May the Lord give you an advantage of every man. By this wisdom, may you go and conquer more ground. May you go and prosper. I bless you as a father. Wherever you enter, let the favor of God be upon you. Let the blessings of Zion be upon you. Let your hands become the tool of wealth creation in the mighty name of Jesus. May you be the one to lift your family from the cause of poverty. May you break the ceilings that have been in your community and family. I declare in this atmosphere, we shall begin to see men that are handling billions, men that are handling millions, humble and anointed for the sake of the kingdom. That shall be our portion. I'm believing God we are entering the space, Pastor William. Next year, we will not sit to plan for what we are wishing. We will sit to plan for what we have. That area we must enter. There is no secret for wealth, principle, laws, and disciplines. And all of us need to prosper. After Monday, I always work. I'm a businessman. Monday and Tuesday, Nisikuzangu's a job. Nazia Kanisa. Ya kutafutia Tyron na Tiffany. Na my wife. With my own hands. Nazia tinapenda. But as a man. Uyu Tyron. Sita mfosa kue bishop. Ati juzaza all my life ni Kanisa nilijenga. Sasa naanza kukamenta na kambia. You are the next in power. Na hata labda hakana wito. Kanataka kuwa dancer. Naanza kukafoska kue preacher. So as a man I must also work. And make sure that I have an inheritance. If any one of them gets a calling, you never know. See, last my pastor of life church, we can plant him. Hallelujah. Wakikosa we told, they will question me as their father. Where is our inheritance? I can't give them Sunday school. I can't give them main church. You know, I'm offering your main church. Munagawana. No. As a man, I must work. Is it easy, pastor? No. I can't remember the last time I watched news. Not because I don't want, but because I have no time. Is someone getting me? I have no time. Hata leo ndo nafikiria nende nione ball. Jusa tumefika quarters. Tunajua ule akifungwa wameenda pato bonus view. Tell me where to see the game. Lift up your hands. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. Go and prosper. Go and make it in Jesus name. Are you ready to give an offering? Yes, please get into your pockets. Next Sunday, I'll be sharing on the mystery of wealth. Just get into your pockets. All the visitors, all the visitors, if you're there, please all the visitors, if you're there, I'll encourage you to get your bag, all the visitors. Just get your bag, drop your offering, and then Mamilka just come. Oh yeah, we have the visitors. Yes, just come, the two. Uh, my physics teacher used to say the two both of you that's why he was the physics teacher just come we have these amazing women of God so if you're a visitor please just come and meet them here and then there is a place we've prepared something nice for you and this will be amazing all the visitors please if you if you, if you are seated next to a visitor tell that visitor he's talking about it let's celebrate our visitors wow wow we are blessed 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 just drop your offering carry your handbag and your luggages thank you very much thank you thank you to the visitors may god bless you if you don't have a church please the search is over we love you already we love you already no let's celebrate our visitors remember day one when you are a visitor and we celebrated you and you came day two now see and look at you Amen, amen, amen. Wow, thank you. Thank you. Wow. Oh, Jesus, what a harvest. What a harvest. What a harvest. What a harvest. My goodness. This is a big blessing. No, church, let's celebrate Mako Amaliza Kwenda. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Oh, wow.
Pigeni makofi ya nyayo mbaka wamalize Mgeni anakujanga siku moja So wacha sikia mepokeleo kwa eshima Na mepokeleo kwa njiaku This is a whole church Hallelujah Wow Thank you Oh Jesus Thank you, thank you Are you ready to give? Are you ready to give? Yes, please get into your pockets. As I said, we are getting into a phase of building. I don't even want to say the budgets, but the God who has brought us this far uh, is well able. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And um, what mattered is we just needed that letter. The other things we can do in phases. Sankara, I'm happy to see you. Just stand. This man, this one. Uyunge muona hapa na tinga. Yendo alitulevolia hii ground. All the work you see here with the maram. He's a contractor. And we bless God for you, sir. We stand on your labors, literally. And thank you for coming, you know, for being a blessing. So, as I look at such talents, it's amazing. That reduces our burden. Because he never charged us the construction, the construction fee. But he made sure that the work was done. So, we're about to get into a very busy phase. We are still trying to talk to the architects, but we are going to build five Sunday school classes. And um, we are going also to build a teens church, an office and a security center. Our parking will come at the back and then we will build a 2,000 seater church that can serve us for almost 10 years. Because before we build the main cathedral, we need somewhere we can stay. And this is quite an expensive venture, but we are going to go step by step. Are we together? Step by step, and we will be there. We will begin possibly with the Sunday schools because of urgency, and then we'll move step by step, and God will be on our side. So, in the month of February, in the month of February, when we call upon you to support us in any way, please, like right now, we need almost six million urgently just to begin the work. Because we need to fence the whole of the area and begin to set up for the Sunday school. So when we call upon you, please don't get tired. Tell that neighbor, neighbor, please don't get tired. And everything is okay. So let me just pray for your giving. Those that are giving, the giving details are Mpesa 3259.59. And those that are giving from abroad, 0726714713. Anthony Mukahura Mwangi is the name for Wave and Remit. The problem, you can't send M-Pesa to uh, any line registered under the name church. It must be open. And those are the giving details. Star 657, star 115. Father, thank you. It is your will that we all prosper. It's your wish that we all handle and accumulate wealth. And I pray that this light will open the minds of men. And none of us here will be in a position not to give their children decency or even provide necessities for their families. I declare that this light will navigate us and give us the wisdom of handling riches and even wealth. And now we receive the offering of your children with thanksgiving and we dedicate it for the works of ministry because we only have one work. And from this hour going forward, Lord, I declare the blessings of the womb the blessings of the breast, the blessings of the heavens, and the blessings of the land beneath. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. May God bless you. Also in the, in the building, we are going to have a cafeteria so that we can be taking tea na ujipawa. I forgot one article. If you want to give your life to Jesus and you're here, please come and meet me here on the altar. I'll be waiting for you even as I receive the worshipers. Anyone that wants to give his life to Jesus, I'll be here. Otherwise, you can give. Let the men gather. Let the, the, the choir gather. And God will bless you. Thank you. As the deep panted for the water of my soul for you. You are God. 
Yeah. 